Good morning, friends. I'm at Mitri Lake today. Let's take a look at the lake. I'll take you over here to the cliff and show you Mitri Lake. That's M-I-T-R-Y. It's near Yuma, Arizona. And it's a beautiful spot. Today, I want to talk to you about something serious. I don't want to be morbid about it, but we're all going to die. And today, I want to talk to you about whether or not, if you're living in Mexico or considering living in Mexico, do you need a Mexican will? So we're going to go into the motorhome here, and I'm going to sit right there in my favorite chair. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Do you need a will in Mexico? Well, the short answer is, yes, you absolutely do if you have assets that you would like to pass to your heirs. It costs a few hundred dollars to get a will in Mexico, and uh, it costs a few thousand dollars to have it executed. So maybe that's the threshold. If you don't have any assets in Mexico, uh, you probably don't need a will in Mexico. And that doesn't mean that you don't have assets. You may have a million dollars worth of assets in some other country, the United States or Canada. But if you're living in a, your old van and uh, withdrawing Social Security from an ATM for cash as you need it, and you don't have any assets in Mexico, you don't need a Mexican will. And of course, if you're immortal like me and you're going to live forever, then you don't need a Mexican will. But every once in a while, it comes to my attention that I am not immortal, and I do in fact, and so does Lynn, my wife, have Mexican wills. And we do these because I have studied it and figured out that it's necessary. Anything I say today shouldn't uh, be taken as legal advice. I am not an attorney in Mexico. Um, I sometimes joke about my free opinions, that they're worth every penny you pay for them. I have a business card that I used to pass out to people free opinions. Now, I've blocked out my name and my or, or my address and my phone numbers, but that's my card. Free opinions and worth every penny you pay. I've been told um, by some people that they don't think they need a will in Mexico because their heirs are listed on the deed to their property and they may have a car and, you know, a small bank account that's not worth the bother of having a will. But the heirs that are listed on the deeds to your property are valid. But there's a couple of things to know about that. First of all, um, there's no rights of survivorship law in Mexico, which means that if you die in Mexico without a will, the government gets to decide who gets the property. And a surviving spouse is not automatically the inheritor of the other 50% of the property if you're both listed as owners on the deed. Um, now, this came to my attention one time when I was sitting in, a, in, a, in the office of a notario. And let me explain the difference because it sometimes causes confusion with people who are new to Mexico. A notario is not a notary public. A notary public in the United States is a person who is licensed to verify that they saw you sign a document. And they do this by checking your uh, ID and then certifying that you, in fact, did sign it in their presence. That's a notary public in the United States. It has nothing to do 
with a notario in Mexico. A notario in Mexico is a special lawyer who is authorized by the federal government to handle specific kinds of transactions, uh, real estate uh, in particular. It's kind of like um, the, the function of a title company in the United States when you do a real estate transaction the title company makes sure that the title is clear and that all of the um, uh, problems that you might have with the title are taken care of before the transaction is actually made and then the title company after uh, all the paperwork is signed is responsible for registering it with the government authority it's the notario in Mexico, a specialized attorney, who serves that function when you buy a property in Mexico. I explain that because I want you to understand uh, what I say when I was sitting in a notario's waiting room one afternoon talking to a lady who was also a client whose husband had died without a mil will in Mexico, and uh, she was having some problems. Her problem and her complaint was that even though uh, she and her children were listed as heirs in the deed to their property, and it was a considerably valuable property, um, she was having to go through this process of having it transferred to her and paying the same kinds of fees that she would have paid if she were buying the other half of the property. And sometimes uh, those fees can be several thousand dollars. And even with a will, you will be subject to that. What you're not subject to if you have a will <coughs> is the rest of the process, process which at the point I was sitting in the notario's office talking to her had taken her over a year and here's what happens if you die without a will even if you have heirs listed on the deed to your real estate property in Mexico and it certainly it applies to any other properties that you have in Mexico like uh, an investment or a bank account or vehicles or whatever uh, asset you have if you die without a will the federal government of Mexico gets to decide what happens. And that doesn't mean that they're going to decide that uh, your rightful heirs don't get the property, it goes to your gardener and your maid. That's not what happens. What happens is that it has to go through the court system instead of being executed by an executor. And that's one of the important things about having a will in Mexico is that it names an executor. If there's no will, the first process, and it's a court process, names an executor. And that can take a long time, months, to get an executor appointed by the government for your assets. The next thing that has to happen is that since there are no rights of survivorship, all the people who may be affected, and if your uh, children are listed as heirs in the deed to your property, <clears throat> a whole bunch of paperwork ensues. Their birth certificates, their marriage licenses, their um, valid residences, all of these things have to be translated from English to Spanish. And even if you have a foreign will, foreign being not Mexican, U.S. or Canadian, for example, even if you have wills in those other countries, they are valid in Mexico, but again, it can take a year to have all of the paperwork done with tr uh, official translations of all of the people involved. And again, if it's not a Mexican will, you have to have birth certificates and marriage licenses and 
you know, identifications all translated officially into Spanish. And once that's done, then it's another court process, and then it has to go back to your home country and be what's called apostolicized. It's a very complicated and long and involved and expensive process if you don't have a will in Mexico. Um, I have uh, some experience with this on the wrong end of the stick. I bought two properties in Mexico. Before, many years before I bought these two properties, they were owned by the same person. And that person died, and his sons, two sons, inherited the property. One son probated it in Mexico, and um, the title was uh, available for me to purchase it. And I purchased it without too much trouble. It took about 45 days to close the transaction in, with a notario. The other property, the brother that inherited that half of it, and they split the property into two pieces, never probated it. It had been several years since father died, and it needed to be probated before I could purchase it and get a clear title. That process took six years. Twenty-three relatives had to sign off before the property could be cleared for the owner, the brother, to sell it to me because it wasn't probated. So don't die in Mexico without a will that has to be probated, apostolicized, all of those things. Get a will. Um, September is a month where the government of Mexico um, is, requires that Mexican attorneys and notarios provide uh, the service of preparing a will for half price. So September is called Will Month in Mexico. If you have any assets that are worth more than $5,000 and you care about the people who are left after you die in your family, and either it could be a money thing or it can be a headache paperwork disposition of assets thing. If you're worth more than a few thousand dollars in terms of your assets in Mexico, please get a will. Let me say again, uh, nothing I say here should be taken as the gospel or legal advice. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I think and what I've learned by living there and doing these things myself. I do have a Mexican will. I also have a will in the United States. And I have to tell you that the more I learn about it, the more comforting it is to know that I have that. I have copies of it um, in Spanish and in English, and I've given those copies to my children and also to um, a brother who, um, just so they don't have to look for them uh, when the time comes. And uh, I'm not laughing about it, but the time will come. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.